Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. When learning Android as a beginner, there is one topic you almost don't get around, and that is clean architecture. That is also the type of structure that I mostly use for these apps I show in my courses here on YouTube and in my paid courses as well. And just in case you're not aware of what clean architecture is, that is just a set of guidelines that outlines how you should structure your app so that it scales well, that it is understandable for other people, and that is just overall maintainable and easy to change. And a code that will look something like this that comes from my uh, calorie tracker app, which I've built in my multi-module course. I will put the link down below in case that sounds good to you. But in that course, I just use these clean architectural guidelines to build an app. And very commonly, if you do that, you have different features. So in this case, onboarding and the tracker feature. And these features are then divided into um, tracker data or just data layer, domain layer and presentation layer. And you as someone who is currently learning Android development might now wonder whether clean architecture is rather a nice to learn topic or really a must as an Android developer. And that I want to answer in this video. So first of all, clean architecture is just one way to build an app with a good architecture. That is really important to me because clean architecture isn't the holy grail and the only way to build good software. So that means you can build perfect apps with a different structure as well. Because what it always comes down to in the end is choosing an architecture that fits best to your project. What does that mean? Well, that means that the architecture should allow you to easily make changes to the project. So small projects might benefit from a simpler architecture with less layers, since that just makes it easier to keep the overview. But on the other hand, larger projects where you potentially work on with multiple people need some more specific rules and guidelines. Because if certain changes are just required for such a larger code base, you want to cause the minimum amount of coding effort to implement these changes. And that just shows that software architecture isn't black and white. But what is pretty black and white is what makes software architecture good in general. And that really comes down to the basics. On the one hand, features should have a low coupling and a high cohesion. So loose coupling means that two features of your app should communicate with each other as little as possible. On the other hand, a high cohesion means that one feature is very specialized on what it does. So you can say that it does one thing, but one thing really well. So in other words, high cohesion means that a feature uses a lot of the functionality the feature already provides for itself. So that is one rule what makes software architecture good in general. Another one is separation of concerns. So that is just a key principle which states that you should divide your app into multiple layers where each layer has a clear purpose. So just as I showed you in this calorie tracker project, we have a presentation layer for the app's UI. So we really have the app's UI bundled in one layer separate of all other layers. So for example, the domain and data layer. And that really achieves that if there is a certain change that maybe affects the data layer, let's say we want to swap out a networking library, that ideally that change should only be necessary inside of the data layer itself. And it should not cause a change in, let's say, the UI. And last but not least, what I consider a very general software development principle are solid principles. These are just quite general principles which tell you as a developer how you should structure certain pieces of your code to make it testable, scalable, understandable, and so on. And all these general principles aren't very specific to clean architecture or to anything else. No, every good architecture will fulfill these general principles. And if you stick to them, it doesn't matter if you do that via clean architecture or some other kind of guidelines, but I still highly recommend you to learn clean architecture. And this might now be contrary to what I said before, because I said, hey, it, it really just comes down to these general principles. And if you understand these, you can make any architecture great. But nowadays I have worked with dozens of Android developers one-to-one -one and mentored them. And the number one issue and problem they have is that they go on the internet and 100 different people tell them 100 different things how things need to be done. And by the way, if you'd also like to be mentored by me, check the link below. And if you as an Android development beginner ask someone what the best architecture is and they answer it depends, then that answer might be correct, but it doesn't help you. As a beginner, you're simply not any smarter as you were before. No, what you need is someone who tells you, hey, this is a good structure, here you have specific guidelines and rules, stick to them. And since clean architecture is just so prominent in the Android world, learning that will help you to understand what makes architecture good on a lower level. And once you understand that, you will be able to adjust the architecture to your needs in a specific product because you know what counts in your situation. So to summarize it, learn clean architecture, strictly stick to it in your projects, build some projects, stick to these guidelines, 
learn what it is really about, learn why these guidelines are the way they are. And over time, you will notice that you just feel much more confident about architecture in general, because you will understand, okay, that is why we have use cases. That is why that actually makes our software more testable. That is why certain changes are easier in the data layer now, because I structured it like this. Okay, if I structure the part of the UI layer like this, then it's really easy to understand. Those will be learnings you will actually uh, encounter when you just stick to these clean architectural guidelines once. And again, I'm not saying that is the holy grail. I'm not saying that is this is the only way to build software. It's definitely not. But as soon as you understand one set of guidelines, like clean architectural guidelines, very well, then you also start to feel more and more confident about uh, writing good architecture in general, and also being a bit less strict about certain guidelines if you if you feel like okay that might not be so necessary for this type of project. So in the end, you learn how to adjust these guidelines to a specific project. And I would also love to hear your opinion if you can actually confirm this, uh, that it's quite confusing if people just say, oh, well, the best architecture, it depends on the project because it's true, but it doesn't help you. Or if you just tried out uh, to find out a good architecture on your own. Definitely let us know that down below. And other than that, thanks so much for watching this video. I will see you back in the next one. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye bye.